in this frame, support A is fully fixed, and support B is a hinge. And the connection here between beam and the columns, this connection here is an internal hinge. And this one is rigid. So after deformation, we should be able to imagine that the rigid joint here, 90 degrees, should still remain. Because internal hinge does not take moment, so the beam and the column should deflect separately because there is no moment restraint at this point. So before deformation, it was 90 degree here. But after deformation, we should expect that the angle between the beam and the column should no longer be 90 degree. So now we apply a horizontal force. When the horizontal force is applied at the top corner of this frame, then the frame will deform into this shape. Now we'll look at each individual component. So for point A, is a fully fixed support. So this column deforms into a single curvature, pretty much like a cantilever column. So single curvature without a control flexural point. Now beam deforms into a convex shape. Again, a single curvature without a control flexural point. Now we will see that because the connection between the beam and column here is an internal hinge. So the column and the beam can deflect separately without a moment constraint. So therefore, the previously, therefore, the original 90 degree angle here between the beam and column will no longer be 90 degree. However, for this, however, for this connection, because it is rigid, so before and after deformation, the beam and the column should remain 90 degree in angle. And this column here also develops into a single curvature because point B is a hinge support. The rotation is permitted. Therefore, it develops into a single curvature, no control flexural point. So therefore, in the whole frame, no control flexural point anywhere. 